Hello and welcome to my first look at the miniatures wargame Frostgrave. I got this in the mail the other day as part of my pre-order. Um, I, I got a couple of miniatures, only two, so I'm not going to be reviewing the miniatures for the because only two uh, examples is not enough to base an opinion on. But the ones I got were fine. They were nicely uh, sculpted and cast and detailed and everything. So I assume the rest were good as well. It says right on the cover, Fantasy War Games in the Frozen City. In general, what this is, is a skirmish war game, miniatures war game, for um, war bands of 10 minis per side. And it has a particular setting, which is an old ruined city. Mm, this might be starting to sound familiar to you, but it, it seems similar to an old game, but we're not going to name any names, because uh, this is its own thing. The reason you have a battling wizards on the cover is that the leader of your warband is always a wizard, and the wizard is the only model in the warband that gets experience and levels up in the if you play it as a campaign. Uh, the soldiers, well, first off, the wizard can have an apprentice and should have an apprentice, but the apprentice stats are always based on the wizard. They're always just slightly worse than the wizard. And the other soldiers you recruit have fixed stats. They don't level up. And that's to uh, emphasize that they are expendable. They, they will die and will eventually need to get replaced. But as long as your wizard survives, you're fine. So it's a full color rule book, a nice quality. It's, let's see how many pages it has, about 120 plus some, some uh, stuff you can photocopy in the back. And a lot of it is, um, well, you can see here in the content, the introduction is barely 20 pages about how you set up your warband. It's about 20 pages. Um, the rules for actually fighting the scenarios is uh, 22 pages. The campaign rules for getting experience and treasure and, and using it are another 24 pages then we have also 24 pages of, of spells because those are important in the game where wizards are the main protagonists uh, 12 pages of scen special scenarios if you're not playing the standard game and a bestiary of 12 pages of various monsters you can encounter and the setup as I as I mentioned is is mainly that you create a wizard and you have uh, a good number of uh, schools of wizardry to choose from 10 to be precise and but you're not locked into one um, school of magic you, you if you're for example a chronomancer then you're best at casting spells from chronomancy but you have the ability to to learn spells from uh, the other schools as well, but with rising difficulty, depending on how similar they are to your particular school. Uh, the stats are relatively simple. You only have six stats. Uh, movement, melee fighting, uh, range fighting, uh, armor, uh, will which is for resisting spells, and uh, health. And uh, as I mentioned, the uh, soldiers you can um, recruit all have a certain amount of stats. They also have a cost in how many gold coins it takes to uh, recruit them. Now we get to the actual game system. The gaming system, well, I, I, my first reaction, very first reaction, was a little skeptical when I realized they used a d20. 
um, because d20s create a good deal of randomness. Uh, they're what we call swingy. Uh, very hard to predict the results. And I thought, mm, how's this going to turn out? But my fears were laid because it turns out they have uh, mechanics in place to mitigate the swinginess. First off, the attack roll is always an opposed roll. You roll d20s versus each other, and the highest roller wins. And the attack roll is also the damage roll. Now, that sounds like a lot of damage. But you will find that if you look at the uh, stats, uh, nobody has less than 10 armor, which means the range of possible damage is reduced from 1 to 20 to, well, 10 possible points of damage. And just about everybody has at least 10 health. This means it's it will be very, very rare to any, for anybody to go down in one hit. Most models will survive at least a couple of good blows. Um, the um, turn order is interesting in that uh, they are a, a sort of I go, you go system. That is, you take turns uh, activating all your figures at, at once. But, um, well, not all the fi figures. You, 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 you uh, alternate activation through the phases, and the phases are not based on different types of actions. Like in many, many other games, we'll have a movement phase and then a, a combat phase or a shooting phase. The This game has a wizard phase, which means you start by activating your wizard. And then there's the apprentice phase, where you activate the apprentice. And finally, the soldier phase and the creature phase for, for NPC monsters. So, so it, in, in a way, there's a built-in initiative order where the, the mo more important characters will always get to go first. And w within each phase, you alternate activation, as in the first player, the, the gun, one who has initiative for the turn, activates his wizard, and group activates any soldiers near the wizard, and then the other player does the same. You go to apprentice phase, and the first player activates his apprentice, and you know it goes back and forth like that. So, so you get the effect of of alternating activation, but you're not free to choose exactly who to activate when. You have to go first with your wizard. And uh, the rules, as I said, I, I already gave you all the combat rules essentially. Uh, there is very simple movement rules. I like that they are kind of um, um, vague about things like measuring, as in they're not anal about base sizes and uh, measuring exactly from the corner of this or that, or whatever. This picture, for example, shows you miniatures on very different bases. These are round but irregular. These are perfectly square. And it doesn't matter. It's, you know, you just play for fun. It's a casual game. But there's quite a lot of rules about magic. Um, you don't have any magic points or, or, or the like. You can cast as many spells as you want, except it's just that it, you can only cast one spell per turn and uh, you have to make a casting roll to succeed at it. Um, and you will have different... Uh, probabilities of succeeding with different spells. Uh, this is all very simple. What's the point of the game? Well, the point of the game is basically we're all scavengers. We're trying to get treasure from this ruined city, and we're trying to bring, bring it back to our base. So in the campaign, well, first there's some rules for what happens if you're injured or if you can die permanently, as in most of these campaign-based skirmish games. Uh, there's a, an experience system where you get level up your wizard and you uh, see what can roll the treasures you've acquired and then you can use your money to buy stuff like magic items, new spells, uh, recruit new soldiers, and, you know, generally improve your uh, chance to win the next game. So... This is a first look because I haven't managed. So to summarize, 
this is a what seems like to be a very very fast moving casual yet still tactical um, skirmish game with, with some sort of mild RPG elements in that you can level up your uh, wizard between uh, battles uh, and it seems like a lot of fun I I, uh, I have a group of old friends that have uh, sort of all gotten the game and are all planning to start playing together it, it might take a little while before everybody gets their uh, war bands together and we, we uh, get the free time to do it so I can't call this a review yet uh, but we will be playing a lot of it, and I might come back and uh, tell you some more about it once I have more experience under the belt. But for now, I would just like to say that my impressions are very positive, and I'm looking forward to this game. So, that's all for today. So, until next video, this is Doc Yellen signing off.